Hello, my name is Tim Everett. A few of you might know me as RTK Live Explorer, the name of my blog in which I write about my experiences with low-cost GNSS and RTK Live. A little bit more about me. I have a BS degree in electrical engineering from Cornell University and a master's degree from Cal Poly University in San Luis Obispo. I am the founder and owner of RTK Consultants, a consulting company that specializes in providing and assisting with low-cost precision GNSS solutions. I have been maintaining a demo 5.4 from the RTK Lib open source software for about six years. Today I'm going to talk about applying RTK Lib open source software to the 2022 Google Smartphone Decimator Challenge. Okay, first a little about the competition itself. The goal was to generate the most accurate solutions from raw Android GNSS data. To collect the data, Google mounted phones on the dashboards of a number of vehicles as shown in this image. They then collected data from multiple rides in San Francisco and Los Angeles areas of California from both the Android phones and simultaneously ground truths from a high-end GNSS slash INS system. Competitors were scored on how close they could match the ground truths based on an average of the 50th percentile errors and the 95th percentile errors. Because the phones were located inside the vehicles and because the phones have very low quality antennas, the raw data was significantly more challenging than what you would get from even low-cost receivers that I more typically work with. The raw data was split between a training set for which the ground truths were provided and a test set for which the ground truths were not provided. The test set was further divided into a public set and a private set. Competitors could submit their solutions and be scored on the public test set any time during the competition. But scores for the private test set were withheld until the end and then these scores were what were used to determine the winners. Beyond the competition itself, Google's longer term objective was to create a standard data set for evaluation and comparison of GNSS smartphone research efforts. Next, I'll talk a little about RTK Lib. It's an open source general purpose GNSS data analysis tool, originally developed and released by Tomoshi Takasu from the Tokyo University of marine science and technology in 2006. In 2016, I forked the code to create the Demo5 version of RTK Lib, which I have optimized and enhanced specifically for practical, low-cost GNSS applications. I keep this synchronized with the original branch, and most of the code is still common between the two. This code is used in many commercial applications, including surveying, drone photogrammetry, precision agriculture, sports tracking, marine navigation, ground subsistence monitoring, etc. RTKLib contains many tools and capabilities, but for this exercise, I worked with the PPK, or Post-Processing Kinematic Solution, in RTKLib. For those of you not familiar with PPK, it is the post-processing equivalent of RTK, or real-time kin kinematics, and is a differential solution using observations from a nearby base station. Because many errors are common between the rover and proximate base, including atmospheric, orbital and clock errors, they can be effectively removed by differencing the base and rover observations. PPK solutions use both pseudo range and carrier phase observations for higher accuracy. Typically, a PPK solution can achieve centimeter level accuracy if the integer ambiguities in the carrier phases can be resolved. But for this work, no attempt was made to resolve the ambiguities due to the data quality, and so the errors will be larger. The baseline source code and Windows executables for this effort are available on GitHub at this URL. Okay, let me start by setting some expectations and giving some perspective for the rest of this presentation. I'm not going to share any brilliant new ideas on how to process GNSS data. What I am going to do is to demonstrate that with some optimization for the unique characteristics of smartphone data, that a conventional PPK solution can provide respectable results. More important than the results, though, is the tool used to generate them. My hope is that by providing an open source solution for this standard data set, that it can be used by others as an established starting point to take things further. Even for those with a solid theoretical understanding of the PPK solution, actually implementing it in code can be a significant undertaking, so having an established starting point can be very useful. When I entered the 2022 Decimator Challenge, I had a few goals in mind. Short term, it was an opportunity to demonstrate the capability of RTK Lib in a relatively high visibility form. 
longer term to pro provide a publicly available reproducible result for future work. And lastly, to provide a benchmark for what a conventional VPK only solution can achieve. This can provide context when evaluating more novel approaches. Here, I show some top level differences between what the default RTK lib PPK solution has been optimized for and the smartphone optimization. Generally, the goal of a PPK solution is to resolve the integer ambiguities in the carrier phase observation. This improves the solution accuracy from submeter or decimeter level to centimeter level. In our case, the quality of the smart smartphone measurements is too low to reliably resolve the ambiguities. This means we can be less conservative when it comes to discarding lower quality observations since we don't need to worry about corrupting the ambiguity resolution process. Also, because our expected accuracy is lower, errors such as single cycle slips are now smaller than our expected accuracy and can provide more value than as in a solution with centimeter level accuracies. I'll talk a little more about this, a little more about some of the items in this list later. I should also mention that I began this work using data from the 2021 decimeter challenge and this effort is actually an extension of that earlier work. Here's a block diagram of the full solution process. The first step is to download observations for nearby core space stations, as well as satellite ephemeris data for all of the rides. These are available from the IGS and NGS websites. The base station locations do need to be adjusted for tectonic plate movement since the published positions are from 2010. The second step is to convert the raw Android data to Rhinex format, which is the required input format for RTKLib. RTKLib does have the capability internally to convert raw binary data from many popular receiver manufacturers, but not yet for Android. It is important to understand that this is more than just a translation step because the Rhinex format does not accommodate measurement quality information that is present in the raw binary. Before discarding that info, we need to use it to filter out the lowest quality observations. The third step to use RTKLib to calculate the PPK solutions is the core of the process. And the last step is to do any post GNSS processing and convert the solution to the format required for submission. First step is pretty straightforward, but I will describe the other three in a little bit more detail in the next few slides. Let's start with step two. As I mentioned before, RTKLib doesn't yet have the capability to convert the raw Android GNSS logger binary files to Rhinex. So this is done with Android Rhinex, another open source tool that I maintain. It is based on an earlier tool originally developed by Rubukun. For the most part, I used filtering thresholds recommended by Google in the 2021 competition to determine which observations to include in the Rhinex file and which ones to discard. I should note that Google did include Rhinex files in their competition data, but these files did not use their suggested filtering rules, and I found them to be suboptimal representations of the raw data. Probably the most significant change in, made in this step from the default process was to ignore the cycle slip flags reported by the receiver. I've plotted one of the Google provided Rhinex files on the right here. The red ticks are cycle slip flags. You can see that in some periods that almost every satellite shows a cycle slip. RTKLib will ignore any carrier phase measurements that has been flagged, but it is not realistic to discard this many observations in the solution. Not all flag measurements actually contain slips, and some slips are small enough to be usable. Rather than throwing out this much potentially usable information, we clear all cycle slip flags in the Rhinex file and rely on RTKLib to detect and exclude the larger cycle slips. The next step is calculating the PPK solutions. Most of the optimization work was done in this step. However, there are no revolutionary changes here. It is an accumulation of many small changes. I will briefly describe a few of the more significant changes here, but there is more detail in my paper. Broadly speaking, the goal is to maximize the number of observations used in the solution, but to deweight the lower quality measurements appropriately rather than discarding them. Some of these changes were made simply by modifying parameters in the existing RTKLib configuration files, but for others, I also needed to make some changes in the code. In a typical PPK solution, the largest sources of error in the raw observations are atmospheric errors, so it makes sense to weight the observations by elevation, given that the length of the atmospheric path is a function of elevation. For smartphones, though, the errors from signal quality and multipath 
have been shown previously by others to be larger than the atmospheric errors. So it makes more sense to weight the observations by signal quality, which is what I have done. Most dual frequency receivers support L1 and L2 rather than L1 and L5 that the smartphones do. L5 has longer codes and higher signal strengths than L1 or L2, and there were some opportunities to adjust the observation weights more appropriately for these differences. Since the default PPK solution relies on generating a fixed solution by resolving the ambiguities, the quality of the float solution, where the ambiguities have not been resolved, turns out to be, at least relatively speaking, a little neglected in RTK mode, and there were several opportunities to improve this, particularly in cases where the overall measurement quality was very low. In general, the smartphone data has made a great, straight test, great stress test for RTK lib and exposed some of its weaknesses. I was then able to fix these and port them back into the mainstream RTK lib code. This helps not just the smartphone solutions, but all PPK solutions under more challenging conditions. Most of these were code changes rather than configuration changes. After the PPK solutions are calculated, additional steps can be taken to try and further improve the results. This might include integrating with IMU data, applying machine learning techniques, ensembling multiple solutions, or simply filtering and removing outliers. Since my focus is on the RTK lib software, I have tried to minimize the amount of post-GNSS processing. In my final submission for the competition, I did run the PPK results through, through a weighted self-golf filter, as well as ensemble two RTK lib solutions as shown in the top block diagram here. Interestingly though, I found after the competition was over that simply submitting the first solution by itself with filtering as shown in the bottom block diagram would have given me a better score on the private data set. In fact, that score is within one centimeter of the third place finish in the final results of the competition. Although the ensemble solution performed better on the public data set, I believe the score on the private data set is more meaningful because the public data set score was heavily influenced by a couple of rides with large numbers of hardware continuities. The carrier phase measurements are virtually unusable on these data sets and at least with RTK lib have to be handled separately. The vast majority of data sets had zero hardware clock discontinuities, so I consider the rides with the discontinuities as anomalies. Here's a snapshot of the full range of solutions aligned by score. Note that these are all private leaderboard scores, so were not available until the end of the competition. The solutions in green are ones that were shared publicly during the competition. On the far left is an initial baseline provided up by Google using weighted least squares of just the pseudo range measurements. Next is a public no notebook shared by Tara, the winner of the competition, using carrier smoothing, weighted least squares, and a Coleman smooth, smoother. The next solutions in green are notebooks I shared using both RTKLib and RTKLib-Pi. RTKLib-Pi is a fairly strict rewrite of the RTKLib PPK solution entirely in Python. It runs much slower than RTKLib, which is written in C, but is much easier to work with. Based on discussion posts shared after the competition was over, Many competitors incorporated at least one of the public notebooks into their solution. In fact, third place appears to be a well-implemented combination of Taro's no notebook and the RTK notebook. The solutions in red are the official competition results. You can see first, second, third, and sixth plotted there. The solution, solutions in blue were achieved after the competition was over. And the RTK lib one is the one I mentioned in the last slide. Just as a reminder, all scores are the means of the 50 percentile errors and the 95th percentile errors. Since ground truths were not provided for the test data sets, it is not possible to provide much more insight into those results. It is easier to take a closer look at the training data rides since we do have ground truths for them. Here I show cumulative density functions broken down by phone for a subset of the training data. To make the data set more representative, I removed all training rides that Google had identified as having bad ground truths and those corrupted with hardware clock discontinuities. Since the rides in the test data set were all completed in 2021 or 2022, I also removed all of the training rides from 2020. I have divided the data up here by phone type, but since ride sets vary by phone, the differences between phones 
is probably not significant, especially for the Pixel 4 phones, which were not well represented in the post-2020 rise. Notice that if we judge just by the 50 percentile errors, then it would be fair to call this sub-meter accuracy. Sometimes numbers by themselves are hard to visualize, so I've provided a couple of typical results here superimposed onto Google Earth maps. The green lines are the articulated PPK solutions. So to summarize this effort, I think that it shows that one, PPK solutions can be effective for smartphone data if appropriately optimized. And two, it provides a benchmark baseline for a conventional PPK solution for this data set, which will hopefully be adopted as a standard data set for further work. I hope that making this solution public available will prove useful for further work in this area. So that's it. I'd like to thank Google, not only for providing this opportunity to demonstrate RTKLib, but also for their financial contributions to maintaining the demo-fied RTKLib codebase through the Open Source Collective organization at this URL. So thank you very much.